Hello, my name is Satria, and this is my physics term tool project, which is called Physics in the Past. Well, the big question for this term is why do visionary leaders adapt? The focus question is how can humans analyze transformation based on the physics concepts and laws in day to day activities? So, the outcomes for this project are able to develop a forward-thinking design based on the understanding of Newton's laws of motion and able to analyze a daily life problem based on the principles of work, energy, and power. So first, we have free body diagrams. Free body diagrams are diagrams of two or more connecting objects that illustrate the forces that act upon those objects. So, in this case, the forces that, that are in action are the normal force, which is, which is the force that prevents an object from falling through the surface of another object. Gravitational force, which is the force that pulls an object down, and friction force, the force generated by the surface of an object. So, in this picture, the gravitational force is pulling me down in my chair. However, the force, the normal force of the surface of the chair is keeping me from falling through the surface of the chair. I'm also pushing against the piano and, and I am moving forward in the chair. However, the friction force that's generated by the surface of the chair will Will, will prevent me from moving too far. So in this in this in this diagram there there are two different forces in action other than normal force. There's weight which is which depends on the mass of an object and tension force which is the force genera generated by ropes or chains that they're pulling on an object. In this picture, the weight of the swing combined with the w my weight and the weight of my brother is, is pulling it down. However, the tension force generated by the chains is keeping the swing in its place. And the normal force in this diagram is coming from the poles that hold up the chains. Now onto Newton's first law. Newton's first law, also known as the laws of inertia, states that an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. This means that an object will keep doing what it is doing. An object that isn't moving will not move. An object that, was, that is moving will keep moving unless an unbalanced force is applied to it. In this case, the chair does not move until I apply an unbalanced force to the chair by pushing it. And even when I'm pushing the chair, it does not keep moving forever because there is another unbalanced force acting on the chair. That is friction, the friction of the floor, which slows the chair down. Now onto Newton's second law. Newton's second law states that force is equal to mass times acceleration. It can also be written as an equation, F equals, equals MA. M stands for mass, and A times for acceleration. So, in this picture, the, the mass of the bike is 15 kilograms, and my mass is 65 kilograms, and when combined, the total mass is 80 kilograms. The bike is also accelerating at a, at a speed of 1.5 meter per second squared. Therefore, when, when the mass and the acceleration of the bike are multiplied, then, 100, then it results in 100 newtons of force being exerted on the bike. Now, on to 
Newton's third law, which states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that um, when, when something is done to an object, such as force being applied on an object, there's always another, there is always another force, an equally, an equally sized force that acts in the opposite direction of the object. In this case, when I'm dribbling the ball, the force of my hand um, pushes the ball down. However, the ball then bounces off the ground, and the force that the ground exerts on the ball to make it bounce upward is equal in size to the force of my hand pushing the ball downwards. However, it is acting in the opposite direction of the other force. Finally, we have conservation of energy. So, conserve. So there, there is potential energy. There, there's potential energy, which is the, which is the energy of an object that is waiting to be used and is stored. And there's also kinetic energy, which is energy an object has while in motion. So, the formula for the kinetic for kinetic energy is mass times gravity gravity times height in this case my mass is 50 kilograms and, and the gra and the force of gravity is 10 meter per second squared and and at point a the height of the swing is 1 meter above the ground therefore therefore um when we multiply the mass, the gravitational force, and the height, the potential energy is 500 joules. Now the kinetic energy is the formula is is one half times fifth times mass times velocity. When the, when the swing is at point A, however, it has no velocity, meaning that the kinetic energy is is would be zero joules so the me and the, the mechanical energy of the swing at point a which is basically the sum of the potential and kinetic energy is therefore 500 joules however the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be destroyed so the mechanical energy of the of the swing is still retained at point b the mechanical energy at point a is equal to the mechanical energy at point b However, when at, when at point B, the swing is zero meters above the ground, and, and therefore the potential energy becomes zero as it is already used up. However, the kinetic energy, however, the kinetic energy beco then becomes the, the potential energy then becomes the kinetic energy, which is 500 joules. And in, or, in order to find the speed, the velocity, we must we, we have to we must divide the we must divide the, the total the kinetic energy with with a half times times the mass. Therefore, in this case, we divide 500 by 50 half of 50, which is 25, and for and, and, and then we get 20. However, in order to find the real velocity, we must find the square root of the velocity squared. So, therefore, and the, square, we, the velocity at point B, which is the square root of 20, is 4.47 meter per second. So, the answer to the big question is, the concepts and laws of physics, such as forces, Newton's laws of motion, and conservation of energy, all exist in our daily life. Therefore, as visionary leaders, we must acknowledge their existence and be able to analyze them in order to adapt to new situations involving the concepts and laws. The focus question is, by understanding the concepts and laws of physics, we will be able to analyze the physics concepts and laws in our daily activities. And we need to know how to calculate the potential and kinetic energy, and we also need to know when the, when the forces and Newton's laws of motion are, are applied. 
Thank you for watching.